I don't need to be. Okay, uh, so nice to meet you. I'm Shingo. I'm going to be uh, interviewing you. And, uh, <laughs> Sorry, what, what's your name? Shingo. S-H-I-N-G-O. All right. Nice to meet you, Shingo. Thank you. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, over here, Jack. He's going to be uh, taking notes. Jack. All right. Yeah. This is Carmen. Or Carm. Hi. Carm. Nice to meet you. Carm's just going to be standing there. Yeah, he, I think he's going to be editing or something like that. Yeah. So. Cool. Okay. So, is it recording? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure it's flawless. Yeah, it's, it's good. Don't click any buttons, Shingo. Okay, it's yeah, I, I got this. Okay, so um, I guess I'm going to do an introduction. So, uh, we are English and I students documenting stories of uh, former students to celebrate Esquimalt High's centennial celebrations. We want to hear what alumni are doing now and what Esquimalt means to them. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing your story with us. So, yeah, um, pleasure. Oh, thank you. So the first question is, uh, what years did you attend Esquimalt? Uh, I was at Esquimalt from 2000 to 2004. Wait, uh, so how was Esquimalt different from other schools that you may have attended? Well, I did all my high school at Esquimalt, actually. I grew up in Esquimalt, went to uh, Rock Heights when it was um, still an elementary school. So uh, I went there for grades kindergarten to seven and then went straight to Spronel High School. So, um, I mean, I couldn't compare it to others, it, only that we were really proud to be from where we were from. And uh, we always liked going and playing, uh, playing against the other, team, uh, the other schools and everything. And there was a lot of pride in our, uh, you know, in our school spirit, I guess. Yeah, oh, excellent. Okay, so um, what was your favorite class or program? Um, history, definitely. Yeah, we had an amazing, amazing teacher. I'm sure you'll hear this from other people, uh, but Mr. Dodds was, uh, I mean, he won tons of awards. I think he won, I don't know, like nas national teaching awards and stuff, but he just brought it to life. And then uh, definitely uh, uh, French as well. We had a great French teacher. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're actually in French version. Oh, are you? Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All right, so um, what is your... The, what is the best memory that you made at Esquimalt High School? Well, um, we had a French program, uh, a, a France trip that um, oh. we did every year, or like that was offered every year. Right. And in grade 10, I went on that. And uh, that was, I mean, that was amazing. That was like life altering experience, I think. I mean, I came back from that and it totally changed kind of what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go. and. Yeah, so that was amazing. Oh, nice. Actually, the um, the grade tens just got back a couple weeks ago from that trip. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it it, it really uh, takes you like it's it's such a great opportunity as a young person to be able to travel and right. experience some of that independence and some of that culture. Um, it just it gets the bug in you, and then you just want to travel all the time. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. So um. How did attending Esquimalt contribute to what you did, or to what you do today, or your career plans? Well, it made me want to, as I say, it made me want to travel, and uh, it also, um, I guess, like the languages, the bands. I mean, I was in band. The Esquimalt always had a really good band program, so it was kind of just an openness to learning, and um, and also the community sense. I guess that's one thing that's really stuck with me is I have a lot of. I mean, I have a lot of friends that I went to high school with that I still keep in touch with. And, um, yeah, so a real sense of camaraderie and stuff. It, get, it keeps you rooted, I think, even when you might be living, you know, somewhere far away. So, yeah. yeah. Um, if you could think of the times you felt successful and were to pick one, can you tell us about that? Um, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, so... I guess like in like academic success, I guess you know getting accepted to go to um, do my master's degree in University of Edinburgh was a was a really nice feeling of success. You know, you put a lot of effort into your your school, and it uh, you know it all builds up to certain points where it's um, you know where a big decision waits, and you know that's when you find out if it all pays off. I guess, and yeah, so that was that was a great feeling. Wow, great. So, um, do you go, did you go on any school trips or did you participate in any teams? Yeah, so as I say, I went on that trip to France, oh, yeah. but in addition to, uh, 
let's see in addition to that well we had a what was that class called it was like it was like a sports class leadership yeah that's it yeah what was it what was it called athletic leadership yeah and we got to take a lot of yeah a lot of good trips and like day trips and i think there might have even been an overnight trip or something at one point but yeah it was it was um there were some really good times there got to take some great adventures and uh, oh, and the Barclay Sound trip. Um, I don't know if I don't know if you guys still do that or not. But we went for like when you when you graduated, you know, in your gr- grade twelve year, you could go to for a seven day canoe trip up in the Broken Islands up near uh, Port Alberni, and oh. you were just camping out on on islands with no electricity, no food, but what you brought, you know, like just out under the stars. And it was, it was amazing. And we canoed every day for miles between islands and stuff. We saw whales and seals and yeah. God, sounds excellent. Yeah. So, um, could you describe your job to us? Um, yeah, so I'm working for the Scottish government, um, as an environmental analyst and my job is, mm, it's mostly about coming up with and testing policy and collecting environmental data, mostly about carbon and climate change. And um, coming up, it, my, my job title is circular economy analyst. So it has to do with material circularity and trying to be really resource efficient, um, you know, a, as a way of reaching climate change targets that we've set. Yeah. So, so, uh, Jack has a question here. So uh, when, um, when you were in high school, did you... Um, did you think you would be going this far across the world to, to for work, or did you um did you think you'd be in the environmental category for work? Yeah, I um I knew I wanted to travel, and uh, as I say from that France trip, and when I finished high school, um I mean when I was in my grade twelve year, I had a job and uh, I had a car, and I sold my car, and I worked a lot, and then uh, my th- me and my three best friends went to Europe. Uh, right after grade 12 and we traveled for a year and then um, so so that you know like I, I had been to Europe before I really liked it and then I I, I moved and lived in France for a year um, two years later and before I went back to, to school to university so I had spent time in Europe I really liked it and uh, it feels nice to you know to to feel like you're bringing something new to the table and learning a lot at the same time, which is what you get when you're traveling and living in a different place, I think. So I didn't know I'd be here. I didn't know I'd be working here, but I always really liked environmental issues and politics. And I always thought they were really important and something I wanted to do. And uh, it just happens that I'm here now. So yeah, just keeping an open mind, I guess. Yeah. So do you have any uh, particular stories from your work that you can share with us? From my work, let me think. Um, well, okay, I guess, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I I uh, recently went to um, to uh, the Netherlands for um, a, some software training. So I spent uh, I spent three days in a pretty nice hotel and uh, got to hang out in not Amsterdam it was this smaller city called Amersfoort which was really nice and uh, really beautiful lots of canals and um, so I'm learning like really cool software during the day that's really useful but during the night we got to go out um, the, all the people in the training and there were guys who were there was a, two people who worked for Formula One the race car team then they were learning about fuel they were they were there to find out about how to make the best most environmentally safe fuel, and then there were other people there from like an airline uh, manufacturing company and you know all all over the place, and we all went out for drinks and and dinner afterwards and then we went to the bar and you know so it was really cool just I got to meet with specialists from all over the world who were coming for this training who I never would have met otherwise and uh, you know really got to share some kind of cross-cultural experiences there were people as I say there were people from uh, the Middle East there were people from the States from Asia so yeah it was really cool oh very cool so um, do you know if the Squamalt is very different from when you attended or have, have you noticed any improvements or renovations <laughs> it's not really <laughs> 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 uh, I haven't. I haven't. Yeah, right. So we'll have to show you around. So uh, you might have 
heard from Mr. Orm, but we replaced the gym floor this year. And you replaced the what? The gym floor. Oh, wow. Also, um... The tennis courts the, have got, been replaced. You got new tennis courts. Oh, so they finally put new tennis courts in? Yeah, they're really good tennis courts, too. Oh, yeah, right on. Good. Yeah, because they were starting to look like Jumanji or, you know, the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, also... The windows. The windows, the windows. yeah, the windows. They, they put, um... Colored windows in. They put, uh, like, stained, stained glass windows in, oh. and it, it looks really, uh, sweet. Nice. Well, that sounds all right. And do you guys still have, like, shop class and metal class and yeah. woodworking? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. And what about band? Do they do that? Uh, yeah, there's still band. I don't think any of us participate in it, but yeah, yeah there's still band. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Did they have an info tech class when you were there? No, you know, it's funny. I bet that's something that's changed a lot, but uh, I went through all of high school. I probably was one of the last, you know, years that went through high school without ever really needing to use the computer for anything. Like, I th I'm pretty sure I, r I hand wrote everything I submitted. Um, like, any time I used the internet, it was more of a, for f I don't know, like for fun or something. Like, I never used, I always used books for research or learning or anything. But, I mean, by the time I got to university, you know, I barely touched a, a book compared to how much I was using the, you know, how much I was using computers and everything. So that probably has changed. I don't know, you tell me. I mean, do you use the computers a lot more? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. like yeah. ninety ninety percent of assignments are now on computers and stuff. Right. And do you learn? Do you learn, like, how to use programs or anything? Or. Uh, uh, yeah. Usually in in elementary school now, um, like oh going to the computer lab and learning how to use the computers is is a mandatory course. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, makes sense. Yeah, but I guess we learn like the simple programs, but we won't learn anything complex, sadly. Okay. There's no, yeah, yeah, unless you want to take a special course to do that. Well, I guess, it de I guess it depends on what you want to do, but one thing I've certainly uh, come to appreciate is Excel. I mean, yeah. man, if you, if you learn how to use Excel, you will, uh, I mean, I only have been learning the last, like, year or two. I, I didn't know anything about it before, but it's a good, sk good skill set to pick up for a lot of things. So, yeah. yeah. Oh. So, um, if you had to, ch had to choose a symbol for Esquimalt, what would it be and why? A symbol? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It would have to be something, like, badass, but also smart. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I think, so, like, I don't know, I'm thinking, you know, maybe, like, I mean, uh, eagle sounds a little too cliche, you know? Like, so we need something a little more West Coast and a little less... Like more Canadian, maybe. I don't know. I'm thinking like an orca would work. You know. What do you guys think? Uh, so much what you said about the eagle. Actually, uh, our mascot is a raven. Oh, perfect raven. Right. Okay. So yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. So that sounds like the perfect mascot. I think that's a well-chosen mascot, actually. Yeah, it blends in with like the native culture. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and the Ravens obviously known for being really like smart and intelligent, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, um, what advice would you give to future Esquimalt students? Um, well, I would say, uh, well, other than the Excel, <laughs> I would yeah. say, uh, I would say, um, don't r don't rush into post secondary school. You know, like, don't rush into university. Uh, feel f like, don't feel pressured to do it. I know a lot, I had a lot of friends who felt like they had to go right from high school into university, and they burnt out. You know, you've already done 13 years straight of school, and and sometimes you need to like maybe take a break to find out what you actually want to do. And it's a great time to you know save up a little money and go and get some life experience. I really really recommend traveling after high school. Just take, go somewhere crazy, take yourself completely out of your comfort zone. You will learn more in that year of travel than you will have in a year of school. I mean, that's, it's an amazing, you just, everything, like, I don't know if you guys make your own food every day or, like, wash your own clothes or have to look after your own finances or figure out how to get from A to B in a strange city or, I mean, like, all of these things are just, you become a much more confident and capable person 
which is what you need in life, you know, because when you leave high school, you're an adult. You got to, you know, the only one responsible is you. So get out there and enjoy it, you know. That's what yeah. I would say.